everybody. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm John Dayton. I'm from the University of Utah. You guys are awesome for being awake this, this early. So um, my presentation is a little different than the, than the other two. Um, I, I don't um, write a blog. I don't record a podcast. But what my goal has been is to get all the awesome content that's out there and compile it in one place. But luckily, we have a lot of uh, uh, colleagues that are experts uh, who have donated their time. My goal is to help you save your time and find those best resources. So um, some, of the, some of the goals for the lecture today, sorry, I'm stay close so I can use this, but um, introduce med forums to you. But uh, the big thing I want to do is talk about different types of FOMED, uh, share a list of FOMED resources, um, invite contributors and uh, peer reviews, and invite you to join the med forums community. Actually, um, anyone that has a screen, feel free to log on right now because a lot of what I'm going to be using is just um, screenshots from the website. So it's at medforums.com if you want to go there. That way, if there are people on their screens, I'll pretend you're there and I won't get really self-conscious. Um, so this, these are the big pain points. No matter where you are in your career, we have a ton of info that we need to know, and we don't have a lot of time to learn it. Um, there's about a million and a half of us uh, you know, in, during uh, med school, it's all about getting ready for the shelf exams or step ones. During residency, you're studying for the in-service. Uh, when you're a practicing physician, it's certifying and then recertifying and doing all of the LOSAs. And so what I, was, what I was thinking about as I was getting ready for my oral boards is, gosh, there's so many options. I don't know which are good. I don't know which ones colleagues recommend. <coughs> so I wanted to find a solution, a way for us to talk to each other. Someone that's had an experience with a conference, if they could share that with other colleagues, positive or negative. Like, hey, this one's the best. Go there for sure, or maybe, maybe not this one right now. Um, so um, basically the problem is we, we need information about education tools that's comprehensive, current, and credible. And then so the, the solution would be somewhere where people can leave those resources, where they can rate them, where they can review them, so we can crowdsource our peers, so we can talk to our colleagues. And uh, so that's, that's what MedForums is. It's um, an online medical community. I'm just getting it launched right now. So if you're on the site, now you can tell it's kind of beta. But we're just getting it. We're just filling it out. But um, it's a product database. And it's also paired with forums. So a good way to think of it, who used studentdoctor.net when they were figuring out what med school they were going to go to or while well, they were getting trusty. So it's kind of a grown-up version of studentdoctor.net. Uh, if studentdoctor.net and Yelp had a baby, that's, that's the goal that we're working for here. So. Um, I, I wanted to, to vet the idea before uh, um, to build the site. So the way I did that is I interviewed a lot of folks at uh, ASAP a couple of years ago. Luckily, 300 of our colleagues um, took the time to just answer a couple of questions. Would you use something like this? What would you want to be on that site? Would you add your ratings? Would you add your reviews? And, and these are the results we got. Um, and this is interesting, like Dr. Milne was saying, as far as who would use it. Um, the, you know, 78% said, yeah, for sure, 14% were unsure, 9% said no. Guess who the 9% were that said no? They were the old Oxford professors that didn't like people in the coffee Great hairs houses. and no hairs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but the early adapters, you, you know, you and I, we don't go to a restaurant without looking at Yelp. We don't buy something on, without looking at its ratings on Amazon. That's just kind of how we, how we consume. So uh, it was the younger, younger folks that were interested. Also. I've, I've used Yelp a ton, and I have to say, I'm not a very good Yelp community member. I've never put a rating down, but I'm happy to look at other folks. Um, I was surprised that almost as many that said they would use it to read ratings also said they'd contribute, which is kind of the foam, foam ed spirit, which I thought was interesting. So this is far and away, we said, you know, would you be interested in using something like this for learning about employers or equipment or education? Far and away, the answer was education. With a lot of folks particularly interested in CME, um, board preparation, journals and textbooks, and, um, and so I, I want to dive into, get back to FOMED. So what are some of the great resources of FOMED? We have, we have blogs, we have podcasts, we have free apps, we have hashtags people follow on social media, and what is it that makes these, uh, makes these such great resources? As Dr. Milne was saying, it's, it's democratization of medicine, but also it's provided by our colleagues that are experts that are sharing their time and putting out their information so that we can look at what they've done and, and we can have that knowledge. Um, and, and so those are some of the reasons it's an excellent resource. It's current, 
our colleagues make it, and it's free. That's, that's the best part. So what MedForms has is a database of these products. We have traditional education products like conferences and books to help you study for the, for the in-service exams. But also, we're trying to get a collection of all of the excellent blogs, like the Skeptical Guide to Emergency Medicine and Rebel EM, um, the free apps. And so folks can search for apps or books, depending on where they are in their education or depending on what they're, what they're going after. Um, also, we've been inviting people to post their blogs and uh, podcasts to the website. If you have a tool that you're aware of or that you produce something, you can just go on and you get a free page. And, um, and that's one way you can communicate with your peers. Um, so that's the big invite. We, we want folks to join the community. And I'll do a quick uh, site demo. But before I do, here's the, the social media part. That's my email right there. Anyone that's checking it out, shoot me an email. Tell me what you like or what you hate. We're very early stage, so we have a chance to kind of build things up and make them better. So we want to build this for our community, make sure that it has information that's going to be useful to you. Um, and then you can follow us on Twitter at, at MedForums. And then we have a Facebook page up as well. So I'm just going to switch computers real quick and do a quick site demo. I'm just going to move Oh, sure. I can make sure this comes up. <coughs> Sorry, I have technical difficulties here. I had it on. Let me do this real quick. If you, if you go to the, the home page, this is what it looks like. It's a quick intro. Tell us about yourself. Are you a resident? Are you a student? Are you getting ready for the boards? Um, and then it introduces the database. And so we'll go right into that. So for example, uh, So let's pretend uh, you're a medical student. So you can come down and click that and the occupation. Mine's kind of set based on my login, just remembers me. But um, So if you're a med student, these are some of the resources it'll give you. Um, you choose your specialty you know, based on what you're rotating in. So let's say you're studying for the shelf exam. And so it gives us a lot of different options. If you wanted to learn more about one of these, you can just click on it. And the features that it includes are linked to Amazon. You can mark whether it's something you're interested in so you can come back later. Uh, it gives an idea how many pages it is, what kind of study time is going to be needed to be involved. And then down here, people can add a rating or add, a, add an experience like, this book was great, this book was so-so, but that way we can kind of let our colleagues know um, what to look for there. So going back. For most of, most of the folks who are here are residents, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So as, as a resident, your big point is getting, uh, big pain point is getting ready for your in-service exam. So here are a bunch of different resources that you could use. So if you got on here, then this is a you know, great resource. You could use this textbook, but it gives you an idea you know, as far as how long it is, what the costs are. You can mark that. You know, you're interested in this, you can come back later. And uh, if you're looking at a couple of different things. The other thing we try to do is add a way for people to remember their CME. So everybody has their own profile. You'll be able to, uh, if you mark different products that you're interested in or that you're reviewed, but you can also keep track of your CME credits. And so uh, that's it, guys. I'd love any questions or feedback you have, but that's, that's my presentation.
have a question, please like use a mic just because we're recording the session so people can hear what you ask. Yeah, so we need the um, people in the blue shirts to stand up and get up to them. Come on, get up to a mic and ask a question. No, you guys know all the stuff, right? So if anybody has a question, we need to use the microphone so that we can record it. And um, I'm looking at the audience. I'm looking at blank faces. Yeah. I'm yeah, but you're not using the microphone. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know if you're familiar with the SAM SOAR um, section of the website, um, but it's something that launched this year, and it's similar in the sense that it's a collection of the SAM's members' um, oh, FOMED uh, creations. And so we solicited, you know, for uh, people to to post their um, creations, you know, just via our newsletter and um, our uh, through the website itself. Um, but <coughs> do you? How do you feel that your creation could work um, with that section of the oh, SAM yeah. website? So w w what we're trying to do is find collections of just really great content that people have um, kind of kind of um, collected out and get it so it's all in one place. We we use the same thing for. Uh, academic Life in EM. They have a lot of resources they recommended for a curriculum. So we've kind of slurped over all the great tools that they've recommended. So we're trying to get everything that will help folks in different specialties at different phases in their career. So something like that will be a great thing to have as a resource we can use to, to get more content as we try to build this mega database. So aren't you just um, running a popularity contest? Yeah, there's a little, there's a little bit of that. But the, 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 what, what we're going for is that um, when folks have an experience, that they have a, have a chance to share it. And I've read textbooks that weren't that great, use apps that were phenomenal and wanted to tell people about them. So this is a chance we can let our colleagues, uh, colleagues know about that. How do you know if it's any good, though? Like, I mean, other than somebody saying it's good, how do you know that the content's accurate and the quality's good? Sure. So, um, you know, a little bit of popularity content, a little bit of user history. I mean, if something's, you know, there's always the negative and positive selection bias, right? You use something that's great, you want to tell somebody, you have a bad experience you want to tell somebody, we're, we're relying on that selection bias to help us find the best thing. Yeah. Uh, so I just got on MedForms. Uh, it looks pretty good. The pre site looks professional, what have you. Um, and I've created an account. Didn't take me long. I had to use Facebook. Yes. Eh, I don't like that. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up because that's the kind of information. Our, our folks that do the web development, they said, oh, we use this because even though people don't get on Facebook, most people have an account. And so I've, I've tried to come back to them and say, you know, why don't we use Twitter? That's the language of FOMED or like just a Google account. So that's actually very helpful for me because I can come back yeah, and, so and let, push for a different API. Let them for get in there and maybe uh, use it without having an account to just yeah. check it out. We're going to have it. Part because, you know, getting an account via Facebook, then you do a code generator. Sure. Is this you in Indianapolis? Yes, it's me in Indianapolis. It's no, it, it, totally. It, that, and that's tricky. W one of the benefits of using, like, an API or, a, or an assisted login is you can kind of vet who somebody is. What we don't want is someone who just has some commercial product going on and upvoting the heck out of it and telling their colleagues do the same. So we have to have a little bit of a way to vet. Initially, we were working with Doximity for that, but they've changed their API. But it, I, I think what we'll do is transition or at least add a Twitter or LinkedIn. Okay, so you really want to only have folks that have, like, legit Yeah, input. we want folks that have skin in the game. This is for colleagues. Uh, some guy named Milne is uprating SGEM even as we speak right now. <laughs> Just logging yeah, over and over. His, his blog's on there, too, so I expect <laughs> a vote for him later in the day. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Yeah, Todd Barker from uh, Program Director in Austin. Uh, one of my questions, and this isn't just for you, but uh, is that my residents tend to like to go on to blogs and um, you know, podcasts to learn the medicine that we're trying to teach them. Well, and they tend to go on to the sites that are the most entertaining, but not necessarily accurate sure. or evidence-based or peer-reviewed. Is there any way that we can sort of build something into this or another forum, which uh, measures the accuracy of the content and not just who's the most entertaining or popular. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great that's question. A one, question yours. one of the things that we're going to be doing is reaching out to the residency programs and the different heads of education uh, for the medical schools so we can work with them to say, you know, what we want to make sure to have the content that you want so it's something you feel comfortable sending out to your medical students and your residents. 
So that, that, that's one of our big things. We want to have partners with the specialty societies and, and educational institutions. And that's a way to, to increase the quality of the content that's there. Yeah, I just see the ratings. Sorry. Sure, I, yeah, no, it's a, it's a I great question. I just see the ratings as uh, who's the funniest or sure. who's the most entertaining, who's the funniest. Kind of like popularity contest. Yeah. Like this guy, but uh, of one accurate. And sure. That's the hard part. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of our goals as, as we launch is to reach out with, work with educational institutions to kind of make sure we're getting popular stuff that's also vetted. Any other questions, guys? Just my last question was yeah, related again to kind of conflict of interest. So, I mean, I have chapters in a lot of the books that popped up there. What's to stop me from just going in there and posting reviews on all of those those things? Sure, and that's part of the reason we were like addressing the the login features. We want to make sure folks, our colleagues, I don't think anything is going to stop folks from having a vested interest in promote promoting their work. Uh, you know, that being said, that's. For, for a textbook, that's going to be limited to the to the authors, and people are proud of it and want to, you know, we have a share function, share it with their colleagues. Then this is a tool we want for them to use that. But uh, you know, at the same time, that's going to be limited how well they'll be able to do that. You know, you, you if you can totally game the system, if anybody can get on, but it, when we limit it to our colleagues, then we're kind of relying on the whole skin in the game and medical ethics and faux med ethos, which maybe will be naive for me. We'll have to see. Right, yeah, I appreciate the feedback. We'll take one more contest. Yeah, yeah um, thanks Questions. for your contribution. I just, um, I'm curious if there is, this isn't directed to you only, but is there like a ethos of all this should be free or is there, uh, you know, some content is for sale or for rent or monthly? Sure. I, it seems like in the emergency medicine community, a lot of people are sharing for free. Mm -hmm. and I wonder, do you subscribe to that? Do you think that's something that should be a tenet of what's going on? Yeah, thank you. So as far as like a, a monetization strategy, conflict of interest, this is something that's always going to be free for physicians. Um, you saw the different profiles for different products that were there. We are going to be reaching out to people that make conferences, offering to build them specific conference pages um, or just enhance things that are on there, add a video or, a, you know, an icon for a booth in an upcoming conference that will, that will be monetized. That will be a way for them to share the education product that they have, but that's a way we'll be able to keep it free for the users.